everyone, it's Sam from US Sport Aircraft, bringing you the top 10 mistakes that student pilots make. As the flight school dispatch manager, I talk to student pilots and their flight instructors every single day. And believe it or not, I was once a student pilot myself. We all make mistakes, and here are some of the big ones. Number 10, not using checklists. Checklists are an absolute must for the new pilot. Commonly, we see students using the checklist for engine start, taxi, run up and takeoff, and then it remains untouched for the rest of the flight. Or, we see students performing checklist items incorrectly due to being distracted or simply rushing through the list. Diligent attention to each step of the checklist is critical for proper operation of any aircraft. If some of the steps didn't matter or the order was optional, there wouldn't be a checklist for it. Number nine, poor weather briefing. Especially on cross-country flights. A common error is not getting a full weather briefing for the route of flight and destination airport, including alternates. Even a short cross-country deserves a full weather briefing. Sometimes we see students attempting to plan short cross-country flights by just checking the METAR and nothing else. The METAR could say everything is VFR and beautiful, but a quick glance at the radar would paint a different picture. Number eight, not enough rudder usage during all phases of flight, but especially right rudder on takeoff. As a student pilot, you probably heard your flight instructor say, more right rudder, more than once. There are four reasons why you go veering to the left when applying full power on takeoff. We call them left turning tendencies. Torque, P-factor, gyroscopic precession, and spiraling slipstream. All four of these forces are trying to make your aircraft turn to the left, so you'll need plenty of right rudder to counter them. Number seven, not using airport diagrams. Good planning is necessary when flying to an unfamiliar field. It seems like common sense, but new pilots should be thorough in going over the airport diagrams for their intended destinations and alternates. We see a lot of students get confused with unfamiliar taxiways. Diagrams are handy. Number six, rushing the pre-flight inspection. This one is simple. There is no reason to ever compromise safety. Don't let your enthusiasm for flying prevent you from doing so safely. Number five, odd northeast, safe flying altitudes. This affects VFR traffic at 3,000 feet AGL and up. If you're flying an easterly heading, you must fly an odd thousand plus 500 feet, like 3,500, 5,500, and so on. If you're heading west, you must fly an even thousand plus 500, so 4,500, 6,500, and so on. An easy way to remember this is odd northeast. Number four, staring inside the cockpit. New students have a tendency to get fixated on maintaining a desired heading or altitude and focus too much on the instruments inside the aircraft. While the use of instruments is needed during the training process for your sport or private license, it should be a secondary source of situational awareness. A new pilot first learns by VFR, or visual flight rules. In short, fly the aircraft by looking outside. Number three, poor radio communications. Radio work is one of the more challenging aspects of flying. Most new students will not have much confidence when they first take over the radios, but don't let this lead to frustration. Practice makes perfect. You won't be perfect right off the bat and that's okay. Keep practicing. Remain calm and trust yourself and your knowledge. Controllers can be intimidating, but they are there to help you. And they will be more than willing to help and guide you if you're in need of assistance. It's part of their job. Students learning to fly at an uncontrolled airport away from high congested areas might become overwhelmed if they fly into a highly congested Bravo or Charlie airspace. But with the appropriate knowledge and some practice, anyone can master radio communications. Number two, overshooting final. The turn from base to final can be tricky for the student pilot. Several things are happening. You're reducing power, managing your descent rate, talking to tower, putting in flaps, maintaining airspeed, along with checking for traffic. All of this happens quickly and can cause a student to make that critical base to final turn too late, resulting in overshooting the runway. Number one, flaring too much or too little. A common mistake for student pilots is flaring too early or too late and ending up with hard or flat landings the first few times. The sport cruiser is pretty easy to land. Once over the runway, we simply level off as we transition into ground effect, pulling back ever so slightly in order to protect the nose gear. In our planes, this gives us a smooth landing every time. 
Flaring and getting the perfect landing is one of the most rewarding and satisfying parts of flying.